Hello everyone. Today we're going to be solving problem 1.1 from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. Using the definitions in equations 1.1 and 1.4 and appropriate diagrams show that the dot product and cross product are distributive. Okay, so we'll start with part A when the three vectors are coplanar. So the equations that we need, 1.1 and 1.4, are written here, and these are the basic definitions of the dot product and the cross product. Okay, so we're trying to prove distributivity, and we'll start with the dot product. And that just means that the dot product of A and B plus C is equal to the dot product of A and B plus the dot product of A and C. Now, first it wants us to use the coplanar case where all three vectors, a, b, and c, lie in the same plane. Okay, so I've got a diagram here, because the question wants us to use a diagram. And here's the vector a, here's the vector b, and here's the vector c. The angle between a and b is theta 1, and the angle between c and the horizontal is theta 2. Okay, now it's helpful for our proof to define a new vector, which is the sum of vectors b and c. So we'll call that b plus c. And also, it would be helpful to define an angle now in between the vectors a and the vector b plus c. So I'll draw that in here, and we'll label that theta 3. Okay, so looking at the horizontal components of each vector, let's start with vector b. So we can write the horizontal component of vector b as the magnitude of b times cos of theta 1. And we can write the horizontal component of vector c as the magnitude of vector c times the cosine of theta 2. Now, the sum of these is actually the horizontal component of the vector b plus c, which we can write as the magnitude of b plus c times the cosine of our new angle, theta 3. So we're actually very close to finishing our proof. Um, the one thing left to do before we prove that the dot product is distributive is to multiply both sides of this equation by the magnitude of vector a. So I'll just write this out. So looking at our final expression here, and equation 1.1 from before, we can actually write this term as the dot product of a and b, because theta 1 is the angle between the vectors a and b. We can write the second term as the dot product of a and C, because theta 2 is in fact the angle between vectors A and C. And this term on the right hand side, we can write as the dot product of A and B plus C. Because as defined before, theta 3 is the angle between vectors A and vector 
B plus C. And so we've proved that the dot product is distributive. As you can see, this expression here is exactly equal to this expression here. And that's the first part done. So now we want to prove that the cross product is distributive in the coplanar case. So we're trying to prove that the cross product of A and B plus C is equal to the cross product of A and B plus the cross product of A and C again in the coplanar case. So before we looked at horizontal components of these vectors and now now we'll look at the vertical component. So let's take the vertical component of vector b, which is the magnitude of b times the sine of theta 1. And the vertical component of vector c, which is the magnitude of c times the sine of theta 2. Again, in a similar way to last time, we can take the vertical component of B plus C, and this is just the magnitude of B plus C times sine of theta 3. Which we defined before. And in a similar way to last time, the sum of these two expressions is equal to this expression, which makes sense if you were to split up this vertical section into two separate vertical sections corresponding to vertical parts of vectors B and C. Okay, so again, we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by the magnitude of vector A, and I'll write this out now. Looking at our final expression here, as well as equation 1.4 given in the book, which should really have a normal vector here to show that the cross product of two vectors points perpendicular to both, but that's less important for this proof. So using equation 1.4 and our expression here, we can write this term as the cross product of A and B. write this term as the cross product of A and C and we can write the right hand side as the cross product of A and B plus C. So we've proved that the cross product is distributive in the coplanar case. So having proved that the dot product and cross product are both distributive for the coplanar case, we're now going to prove it for the general case. And in the general case, what we do is we split up the vector into the x, y, and z components, which is called the, the Cartesian basis. So if we imagine the vector a as ax, 
x hat, which is the unit vector in the x direction, plus a y y hat plus a z z hat. Now, I often find it easier to work in column vector notation, so we'll be doing that from now on. So let's take the dot product of a and b plus c. Which in column vector form, we've got ax, ay, az, and then dotted with bx plus cx, by plus cy, and bz plus cz. Now we can expand this out as if we would any other dot product, and we have each corresponding term multiplied together okay and then we expand this out we have ax times bx plus a y times b y plus a z times b z plus a x times c x plus a y times c y plus a z times c z and straight away, we can notice the first three terms as the dot product of A and B, and the second three terms as the dot product of A and C. So we can write and we've proved that the dot product is distributive in the general case. Now we're going to prove that the cross product is distributive in the general case, again by splitting up a vector into its Cartesian basis with x, y, and z components. So we'll write out the cross product of a and b plus c. The way I'm going to show this is using the determinant definition of the cross product. Um, so let's write this out the determinant. So in that case, the first row is always the basis vectors. So that's x, y, and z. The second row is always this first vector, so the vector a. So we'll have ax, ay, and az. And then the third row is the second vector, which in this case is b plus c. And so we'll have each component of that, which is bx plus cx by plus cy and bz plus cz the next thing to do is just multiply out this determinant so we have the x basis vector 
multiplied by ay times bz plus cz minus az times by plus cy and we have a minus sign and the y basis vector multiplied by ax times bz plus cz minus az times bx plus cx and then finally a plus z basis vector times ax times by plus cy minus ay times bx plus cx So now what's left to do is to expand this out and hopefully try and complete the proof. So we'll uh, come up here and we'll have the x basis vector multiplied by ay times bz minus az times by. And then minus the y basis vector multiplied by ax times bz minus az times bx plus the z basis vector times ax times by minus a y b x okay and then we have three more components to deal with again plus the x basis vector times a y c z minus a z c y minus the y basis vector multiplied by ax cz minus az cx finally plus the z basis vector times ax cy minus ay cx Okay, again, we've got three components here, and three components here. We can write the first three terms as the cross products of A and B, and the second three terms as the cross product of A and C. So to sum up, we have proved that both the dot product and the cross product are distributive. For the coplanar and the general case. Um, thank you for watching the video and comment down below if you have any questions.